Okay, welcome back class. We're going to pick up on exercise 4.3, creating and configuring a super scope. But before we move on to that, uh, if you remember in the first video, there was one little correction we had to make. If you look under your Dropbox, under Lab 4, see note below. I'm going to go ahead and click on there. And okay, see there, I had forgotten that our, I had made this note and put it in there for you. Well also when we get to exercise 4.5 we need to go to the lab challenge and then return and do 4.5 so we're gonna do exercise 4.3, 4.4 we'll then do the lab challenge and then come back and do 4.5 okay so let's go ahead and let's jump over okay super scopes so what a super scope is, is it's, a, it's a grouping of multiple scopes into a single administrative entry. By using super scopes you can support larger subnets. So let's go ahead and let's get let's dig into it. So I'm going to right click on my IPv4 node and I'm going to say new scope and I'm going to call that scope 1. I'm going to hit enter. For my address range it's going to be 172.24.1 20.50 for my end range 172.24.20.240 we're going to change this to be a class C subnet or 24 bits long I'm going to click next on the exclusions and delay click next on the lease duration page change the duration to three days and click next options page click next type in an IP address of 172.24.20.20 and that's going to be our simulated router could be a router as long as it's on our same subnet that we're defining here any one of those valid IPs could be our router right we're going to click next on domain name and DNS server click next Win server, click next, activate the scope, click next, and click finish. Now we're going to do the same thing for scope two with a different range. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to say new scope, next, call it scope two, next, 172.24.21.20.240. Ending range 172.24.21.240. We're going to change it to what class? Yes, a class C. Exclusions, click next. Least duration, change it to three. We want the two scopes to be the same, match all the settings the same. Next. Options, click next. Let's assign the router for this particular subnet and we're going to call it 172.24.21.20 we're going to add next 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 and finish and there's our scope 1 and scope 2 what we're going to do next is we're going to right click on our IPv4 scope and just want to make sure yep okay I right click on IPv4 and say new super scope we're going to click next and we're going to call it Super 1. Click next. Now we need to select the scopes that we want to be part of this super scope. We're going to select scope 1. I'm going to hold my CTR, CTRL button or the control button and I'm going to select scope 2 so that both scopes are selected. Okay, it should look just like this. Click next. There's our two scopes that are going to be included. Click finish. We can now see our scope. I'm going to go ahead and select it. There are our scopes. Take your screenshot and paste that into step 34. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click on super scope super 1 and say display statistics. 
So question number eight is how many addresses are available for the superscope? Well, it's displayed right on your screen right there. The total addresses. How many are there? Yes, you got it. All right. Go ahead and fill that in for question number eight and click close. 3, 4.3 is done. Now let's take a look at multicast scopes. In DHCP multicast scopes, which are commonly known as multicast address dynamic client allocation protocol or MADCAP scopes allow applications to reserve a multicast IP address for data and content delivery. For applications which use multicasting request addresses from the scopes, those applications also need to support the MADCAP API or application programming interface. So we're going to right click on IPv4 once more and we're going to select new multicast scope. We're going to click next and we're going to call it multicast scope 1. And click next. For our starting and ending IP address range. We're going to start at 224.0.0 tab and we're going to end with 224.255.255.255. Now let's answer our next question before we do anything else. Question 9. To which class are multi cast scopes assigned? Look at the address range. What class is that? We haven't worked with that class, have we? You studied it, though. We know that we can have a class A, a class B, and a class C. What class does multicast scopes fall into? That's correct, class D. Once you've answered your question, go ahead and click Next. On the exclusions, click Next. On the least duration, what is the default least duration for a multicast? That's right, 30 days. You've answered question number 10. Go ahead and click Next. Activate the scope now. Click Next and click Finish. OK, so I'm going to select the multicast scope and I'm going to select the address pool. I can see my address pool that's available for distribution. Go ahead and take a screenshot of this and paste it into step 10. If you've gotten your screenshot, you're done with exercise 4.4. Now, if you remember, we're going to do the lab challenge now. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go down a little bit, a couple more steps down to the lab challenge. I'm going to right click on IPv4 and say new scope. I'm going to click next and I'm going to call it normal scope. Click next. For my starting IP address I'm going to select 172.24.25.50. For my ending range 172.24.25.50. 200. We need to change our subnet mask to 24, so it's a class C range. We're going to click next. Under exclusions and delays, click next. For options, for least duration, go ahead and click next. For options, click next. We're going to assign a router for this subnet, 172.24.25.20. We're going to add that. We're going to click Next, Domain Name and DNS, click Next, Win Server, click Next, Activate Scope, click Next, and Finish. So now we have our normal scope up here. I'm going to select it so it expands it. Now, I'm going to right click the IPv4 node. And I'm going to say define vendor classes. Now I've already got, I'm going to remove this because I'd already done it. Just 
and I'm and I'm going to walk it through with you. We're going to click Add. Then we're going to type in for our display name Nortel Phones. For our description, we're going to call it Desk Phones. And I'm going to click over here where underneath where it says ASCII 2. And in there, I'm going to type in Nortel I a space 2004-A. Now, what are we doing here? What we're doing is this. We're creating a DHCP policy. And these policies can give you granular control over scopes by allowing you to assign IP addresses or options based on the device type. For example, Nortel phone. Policies are applicable for a specific scope with a predefined processing order. And those options can be configured at the scope or inherited from a server-wide policy. Okay, so back underneath here, back in here, let's see where we're at. We are right here. We've typed in Nortel-I, lowercase i, space 2004-capital A. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click OK. We can see we've added the, a new class. I'm going to click Close. And here is our normal scope that's been expanded. I'm going to right click on Policies. Oh, I'm sorry. We got a single click on it first. And now we can right click and say New Policy. So here's question number 12. Where do you define a DHCP policy? DHCP policies can be assigned at the IPv4 scope node or for an individual scope. So we could define it up here under the scope under the IPv4 node or under an individual scope. We're going to name our policy policy 1 and click next and we need to add. So I'm going to click the add button and what we want to add is under criteria it needs to say vendor class under operator it needs to say equals under value I'm going to click the little down arrow and I'm going to select Nortel phones. Now I can click add. So it appears in here under the condition and I click OK now it's in here it has assigned those conditions for the policy. I'm going to click next. It says hey what address range do you want to give for anything that meets these conditions? We're going to say 172.24.25.50 if you remember that was our starting IP of our range ending range ending IP is 172.24.25.99 oops wasn't looking at my keyboard let's try that again 99 okay so what's going to happen is when we assign this policy any Nortel phone that is detected connecting under this scope will automatically be assigned an IP address within the 50 to dot 99 range. So we can we can group devices by their type. We click next. Now, if we needed any specific options here, we could click next or or, or select them and then define them, but we're just going to click next and we're going to click finish. So we're back to our screen. We can now see a policy assigned to our normal scope. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the policy and right click on it and go to properties. And we're going to set a lease time for the policy. I'm going to change this from eight to seven days. Once you've done the same, go ahead and take a screenshot and paste that into step 31. If you've gotten your screenshot, click OK. 
now we're going to go back to exercise 4.5 and exercise 4.5 is very short only takes it's only going to take us a couple minutes we're going to go and we're going to select the normal scope right here and I'm going to go down and I'm going to click on reservations and I'm going to say a new reservation I right click and select new reservation so what two types of reservations are supported what two reservation types are supported this is question 11 well if you look in the bottom half of this dialog box what are the supported types there's two different two different ones here right DHCP and boot P there's your answer to question 11 if you've answered that question let's go ahead and move on to our additional steps for the reservation name I'm going to name it PC1 for the IP address I'm going to give it an IP of 214 and notice it already filled in our IP address network ID for us for MAC address we need to specify what a MAC address is going to be associated with this IP address it's going to be E 0 6 9 9 5 6 6 E E 5 1 A that's E 0 six nine nine five six e e five one a I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click add and close now I can see my reservation assigned if you see the same thing go ahead take a screenshot and paste it into step seven you got it we're done with lab four Thank you very much. I'll see you on the other side when we do lab number five.